Hello and welcome to Miniature Realms and welcome to another unboxing to do with Warlord Games' Black Powder Epic Battles American Civil War. Um, and this will be the last of the, or maybe the last of the unboxings for Wave 2. Um, and this is the Iron Brigade. Now, let's sort of cover very, very briefly uh, what you get in the box and what's on the box. So the image on the front shows you the three regiments that you can, can make in this box, from this box. Um, they are metal miniatures. Um, when they were originally advertised, they were advertised as going to be in Warlord Resin, I believe. Now this has been this has been a bit of a surprise to many of us in the community as they've arrived on our doorsteps or in our hobby shops and we've picked them up um, to find out that they are metal. I believe that there was some delay in the resin casting and it would have caused us a, a, a delay in the ability to deliver them and, and not deliver them on time. So Warlord Games has chosen to do them in metal to get them to us quicker. Um, I think that's a good thing. I think it's odd that it was the, maybe it's a bit odd the way it's communicated um, because it's been communicated in a lot of different ways. So we've had a covering letter in the box and I don't know whether that covering letter was supposed to go to um, game stores or something to, for them to tell their um, stuff but some people have had a covering letter some people have had a sticker on the front saying that they are in metal for a limited period um, and the ones I have um, there's actually oh this box is actually fully printed so there we go that surprised me so I've only just taken the cellophane off I'm just going to grab another box so this is the Zoaves that will have appeared in another video there is a sticker here which has gone over the the, the printed stuff um, so it depends at what stage they were at with printing, I imagine. So this has actually got a box that they are, the box, the actual card stock is fully printed with the message saying metal miniatures. So that's interesting. Um, I've not seen that yet. I've only seen different versions of, of sticker or something or other. So there's clearly sort of an inconsistent amount depending on when, they, where they were within the process, I imagine. So, and maybe when you, where you're on the different countries and different things and how they, how they manage that sort of the business. Anyway, but that's pretty boring. But they're metal, and I'm happy they're metal. Normally I prefer plastic and resin, and if you've watched my other unboxings on this wave, you'll have heard this spiel before, so apologies. I do want to take it from the approach that some may find this video first, or might be the only video they watch. I do prefer the metal in this scale, um, just because of the, the experience I had cleaning up the resin generals that I got with wave one. So the resin Lee and Mead were really hard to, to clean up there in the very rubbery resin that, that Warlord do for some things. And when you file them, the, it, it just leaves stuff on there. You can't seem to ever get a completely smooth finish the way you can with other things. And that was a bit of a pain. Otherwise I'd normally prefer it in resin. Um, I know plastic's not an option. Um, because of the because of the costs involved, but um, because of the scale of miniature that I are, because they're on little strips and the way they fit on bases, I'm not too worried about them being chipped and things, which is one of the reasons I prefer plastic miniatures. But metal's good, I think, in this in this case. I think that will give you a higher quality product for the same amount of money. Um, so they are forty pounds recommended retail price. Um, I think that's pretty good value to be honest with you um, you've got 300 miniatures there um, that's um, pretty good value I'll talk a little bit about the costings and things on a vlog I did on vlog number 10 um, and it is slightly controversial I suppose because uh, some people don't you know some people kind of think that these wave two releases are a lot more expensive than the first um, I think it was the same with any starter box you, you get a lot more for your money it's a bit of a loss leader sometimes and, and this is probably the true true uh, price of the range and they are more expensive than the plastic brigade boxes but um again once you've once you've paid for plastics to be tooled etc etc then they can be more cost effective so it is what it is but they basically work out at um 13 pence each i think it is which is cheaper than clister and peter pig so i think you're 40 pounds um, divided by your 300, and let's do it live as I record. Um, just to double check, I haven't got it on. Divided by 300 is 13 pence, so they are cheaper. They're metal miniatures, and they are cheaper than the than the, the nearest in the same scale. 
so to speak. So um, Calistra do 12 millimeter miniatures, which a lot of people are using to supplement this range. And Peter Pig are a 15 mil range, but some people are using them. They seem to be, some things seem to match, some things seem to be too big. So they're, they're, that's why I gave those two as examples. Anyway, that's that little price bit out of the way. It's probably got me a, a dislike on the video. Um, but I think that the value is pretty good, especially when you start to um, factor in you know, discounts at um, third party stores and things as well. It makes them very, very good value. So if they stay in, the longer they stay in metal, I think the, the better the value of this range is to, to a wider part of the community is. Anyway, let's have a look. So you get 300 metal epic battle scale miniatures, three sprues of bases and a Union flag sheet. Obviously the Iron Brigade is only a Union regiment, whereas all the other things are dual purpose. You get two flag sheets, you need the one in this box. Let's um, open up the box and uh, see what's inside. So this is the standard flag sheet that you get with um, each of the boxes. So every brigade box, whether it's plastic or um, or metal now as it is, you get a Union and you get a Confederate one. With this one, you only get Union. Um, the Confederate one is better, I think, in terms of its um, variety. There's a lot less choice here um, in number. You put it once full, um, but you do have your Iron Brigade regiments here. Now you'll, you'll notice there were nine, there were five regiments in the Iron Brigade, based on Warlord Games's um, using five stands to a standard size base. You would only be able to make three, so you'd need to buy another box, which would leave you one extra. But um, if you are using Warlords recommended um, number of stands per regiment per game as, as the, the supplement booklet in with the starter set a large regiment would be seven stands so I'm assuming that they would they would ask, they will say well you make some of them larger regiments most people aren't doing that and including me that we're actually using less stands per um, regiment because it means you can get more on a table because the frontage becomes very very long which makes it unwieldy actually makes it bigger than, than 28 scale gaming in black powder which is a bit odd so i'm using one for tiny two for small three for regular and four for large so i would hopefully based on order of battles for a lot of um for, for, the, for a lot of the games i play um be able to make up the five using this i just need to find some extra um um, command if I wanted to make them five separate regiments or that. It all depends on how you represent them. I won't be buying more. I'll be making what I need for most games out of this because they are not going to, I'm not going to field five full strength regiments. It's just not really realistic for the period. Anyway, box back aside, flag sheet, good quality. Wish there were a few more flags on there, but that does what you need for this. Plastic bases, the standard affair. You will only be using the uh, the longer 60 by 20 millimeter ones, so you'll end up with spares. But it's just one one sprue, so you get your get your extras, and then you have all your miniatures split out into little bags that are numbered for the different sculpts. So what I'm going to do, as I've done with the other unboxings, if you watch them in this little series for Wave Two, I'm just going to turn the camera off while I organize them and find a sculpt for each. Um, otherwise there's a lot of rustling around. It usually takes me five minutes or so and no one wants to watch that. So here we are. There are six sculpts as predicted. You have um, sort of four normal strips here. Um, so four different sculpt overall. There's obviously five men on each to, so you can uh, build up to uh, 300 miniatures but um, they're in, obviously in stands of five. And then these two here have your command on. So one has the, um, the drummer and a flag bearer and the, another one has the officer and another flag bearer. And, and I don't know about the historical accuracy. I said this on, a, on, on the Zouave um, regiment review. I don't know about the accuracy of the placement of those, but they sort of seem to match in with, with most war games and the way they're placed anyway. So I'm, I'm personally not too worried about that, especially at this scale. But um, um, right, let's, what I'm going to do now is use my a trusty um, miniature paint handle holder thing here which um, to, to stick the miniatures on and just give you a little closer look. The whole point of these unboxings that I'm doing is to give you a close-ish look at, at each of the miniatures. I wouldn't be able to do that if there was hundreds of different variations, but uh, um, so they are slightly longer unboxings. They may be sort of 10-15 minutes or so. You can obviously, once you've seen the first one, if that's enough for you, you can just skip on ahead. But um, um, right, let's have a look at the first first one. Now when the pictures were first brought out these were probably the most contentious 
miniatures. Um, there were a lot of people didn't like the sculpt and just said it wasn't accurate, that it looked odd, it looked strange. Um, and I can look at the miniature and think that, you know, it's, it looks quite well proportioned, the faces look good and stuff, but there are some bits that even I think they're a little bit, and I'm quite a fan of this range, so um, even some little bits that I think that do sort of stand out a little bit, whether their hats quite, whether they look a little bit too big, whether they're, they're right. Um, and then you've got this kind of what looks like webbing across the chest. Um, and I haven't done a lot of research into it, but um, it's not something you see in, um, in a lot of the images I've seen. Um, but I'm not saying it's not accurate. I just don't know, to be honest with you. But there's a lot of noise around the the accuracy of these sculpts. Um, they look like they're in some kind of longer coat anyway, so a frock coat. Um, and I've seen images of them with slightly longer coat, but not with that as well. So whether is it whether it's supposed to be like a, 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 a like a rain sort of covering over the top as well? I, I'm really not sure what that line across the chest is supposed to be because it's not around the back. So that's the bit that kind of stands out as a bit strange. It just looks like some extra webbing. So if you know, please do comment. I like. I know I've seen a lot of comments online about it. it's just they're not realistic and they got the uniforms wrong. Um, but I like to if there's someone's out there that's a real expert. I, my my knowledge of the American Civil War is much more sort of top down and and generalised um, political campaigns, battles, and things rather than the kind of individual uniforms of of each regiment. That's where my uh, knowledge is a little bit more kind of vague so i would love to you know read some comments about whether people think yeah that's just wrong or no that's right it'll be fine for this campaign or whatever as such but so let me know let me know because that's the only bit about these that i think that does look a little bit odd it does it looks different to other iron brigade sculpts that i've seen on the market um and when i look through my trusty uh um osprey books it doesn't quite match the images in there. The Iron Brigade one I have is quite old. Um, the artwork's quite old, so things may have changed. But in terms of the, if you if you forget that part and we pretend that that is accurate, because maybe it is. Um, other than that, I quite like them. Um, I'm not sure I want to leave the bayonets on. I think at this scale that can always look a little bit odd. You see that on sort of six and ten mil miniatures where they have to make them a certain thickness, otherwise they just break off. But I think that just looks a little bit odd. Um, and the plastic ones don't have them on, so I'm tempted to um, tempted to remove them, so to speak, because I just think they'll look a little bit better. And there we are. So that's the second variation. Again, I really love the faces. It's such really, really high quality for, for this scale. Um, I'm sure it's digitally sculpted, and that's why they're in the strips like this. I really like, I think that's the way to go forward um, to produce really, really high quality miniatures um, in these smaller scales and really kind of opens up ticks both boxes for me in terms of the quality. I, I'm a bit, I'm a painter and I love really good quality miniatures but I prefer smaller scales for these kind of periods and if you get this kind of quality, what often puts me off sometimes is the quality of some of the smaller um, scale miniatures um, and which is natural if you're you're sculpting those things by hand it's just impossible to make them look anything like the larger 28 mil that we're also used to. Well for me this starts to you know tick both boxes because you do almost the quality of, of a 28 mil sculpt but in, in a small scale which is brilliant here's number three very much more of the same now there's not a massive amount of variation but it is nice to have that there right now i couldn't tell you what the variation is between numbers sculpt number from bag number one and bag number three but i'm sure by the time i've painted them that I'll, I'll be familiar with them all it's nice to be able to mix and match what goes front rank and what goes behind when you've got you know, need four of these per stand um so you can really get some nice looking variation in your in your armies last of the standard ones pretty good really. Those are the commands, you've got your, your drummer here and you have your flag bearer next to it. Um, the flag, the banner pole, the flag pole looks a little bit 
bigger than the Zouave one. It seemed to be about the same height as the um, musket with the uh, on the rifle with the, with the bayonet on. So it looks a little bit better. If you've already watched that unboxing, I was talking about that, but. Uh, Pretty good. And the final one, and then we've got your officer. Um, second flag bearer and three more guys. So minimal cleanup actually. You've got lots of that large flashing, which most of it falls out of the bag. Um, and they'll all leave the bottoms of their bases foiled down. Um, so they can glue them flat but after that um, it won't take too long at all to clean up with a file and um, I honestly don't think it would take too long nowhere near as long as it would have if these were in resin so as I did on my previous video just a quick note on scale um, it's been you know commented in a couple of groups that they were out of a little out of whack um, I don't think they really are. They might be a little bit fuller in figure to the plastics and they are wearing big coats and things as well but I think that they are pretty well scaled um, and you can see that they're from the same range. There was a photo that made the Iron Brigade look significantly taller than, than the plastics and even taller than the Zawal so it looked shorter um, and in my own experience opening my own boxes um, the stuff I have uh, they they seem to match scale so I don't know what went wrong there I don't know if that's a particular set of miniatures or cast that something went wrong I don't know how that would happen but or well, it's just the way it's photographed but um, I think they um, seem pretty good to me I'll pop up a little image as well now with with all three different sculpts as well as, on as well I've, you would have potentially seen that before if you if you are a subscriber or you watch a lot of my videos um, it's not the best quality because it's just a screen grab from a vlog I did but again, it shows all three together. So you can see that there, there, are, there isn't a major problem with scale. Anyway, thank you for watching this uh, unboxing. There are lots more on the channel to do with Epic Battles American Civil War, if that's something you're interested in. If you've maybe bought in the original box, you're unsure whether to get anything from Wave 2. If you're um, thinking of dipping your toe into the period with um, that this scale in this box, um, it's well worth looking out looking out for those videos because I talk a lot on, in quite in quite detail about the what you get and some of the discussions online about how to use them. So I talked a little bit about already about the um, how many stands to use for a regiment. So I talk about that as well, um, and I'm I'm doing a vlog. Um, which there are 10 out at the moment as I record this there may be more by the time you're watching um, I do a vlog um, on the channel as well to do with epic battles and my own progress with my own painting and my table building towards uh, a big Antietam cornfield game but I'll do other things as well but lots and lots of American Civil War epic battles content on the channel if you're just finding this new there are other systems on there as well I have lots of projects on the go so it may be worth having a little look. Um, please like, share, subscribe and all that stuff. And thank you for watching and I'll catch you soon.